Hey y'all, I'm Chris, and this is your 2022 Flying Cloud 23 foot front bit. Again, we'll start here at the front with the solar guard. I'm gonna reach up and level this out. And we're gonna do this to open the front window. That front window opens outward. It is blocked by this solar guard. So you will need to come outside and open that before it's gonna allow you to open it from the inside. All the rest of the windows in the trailer that open do open from the inside, but they do tend to stick to the rubber gaskets, especially in the summertime when it's hot. So if you've undone the latches and you're pushing on the stalks inside to open the window, the window does not open readily, don't force it. You'll end up shattering it. I want you to come outside with your finger, with an old credit card, maybe even a plastic scraper, free it from the gasket, and at that point you can open it from the inside. On this trailer, when you open the center solar guard, you will also be allowed to open the side solar guards. There are rubber gaskets around the edges of these, but over time, dirt and leaves are gonna get past those and the windows that are behind them will get dirty. The only re good reason you have to open those side solar guards is to clean the window. The screws that are here and here have a T-shape. So you're just gonna give them a quarter turn. They're gonna come out of the channel. They're both gonna hinge away from the trailer. Please make sure that when you do so that you have a hold of the solar guard itself. If it's windy outside and the wind flings it open, there's not a stop. It will put a crease on the side of your trailer. Behind the propane cover, We've got your battery box. This trailer is going to come with AGM batteries. It does have the onboard solar. In here, we're going to find two fuses. This is the fuse for the tongue jack. This one is a 30 amp slow blow fuse. It's the only one on the trailer that's going to be that shape. We're going to back up and talk about the tongue jack for just a second. The tongue jack on this trailer is power. It does have a light in case you've got to connect it connected at night. This tongue jack does not stop immediately when you release the trigger. So I do recommend you let it come to a stop before you reverse directions. But if you forget and suddenly reverse directions, the slow blow fuse will absorb the amperage a little bit. It's not gonna pop immediately. But if you go rapidly back and forth on that switch, you will blow the fuse for the tongue jack. Now there is a manual crank that comes with the trailer. You'll be able to fit it down here under the little bubble. That'll allow you to manually crank it on or off the tow vehicle. But if you have lost power, check the fuse first. The tongue jack is wired directly to the battery. Again, in here, we've got another standard 15 amp blade fuse. This one's for the solar plug that's over here. So in addition to the onboard solar, you can plug in a portable panel. It's got a little plug right here. It's already wired into the batteries. It's gonna to add to the onboard solar. <clears throat> Next to that solar plug is where you're gonna find the handle for the spare tire. There's a cotter pin holding a slide pin. If you pull those, the handle's gonna drop down. The spare's gonna slide out that direction. It's gonna be 80 PSI on the spare tire, just like the road tires. You've got your propane bottles under this cover here. This trailer comes with 30 pound bottles and they're already full. In between, you've got an automatic regulator. So if you've got both bottles open, when one bottle runs empty, it'll automatically switch over to the other bottle internally. You can use this little post to point at one bottle or another. And if that bottle is open, it will pull from it. This trailer does not come with a gauge for the propane. So I will recommend you run one bottle open and run one closed. So when that bottle runs empty, Whatever device you're using stops working. You have to come outside, close that bottle, and then open the other bottle. So that way you're at least aware that you're running on that second bottle. You can be a little more conservative with your propane. Start thinking about get that first one filled up. If you'll come around here, Brian, <clears throat> on the other side of the battery box, you're gonna find an external propane port. That is gonna feed off of the onboard tanks. It's a low pressure service. You can use that to run a little camping stove, maybe even a little space heater. Around the corner, we've got your gross vehicle weight and tire pressure sticker. Again, it's gonna be 80 PSI on the tires and you wanna maintain that pressure for best towing and also best tire wear. Now the stud below and its friend down at the end, as well as their twins on the other side, will be how you manually draw the stabilizers down on this trailer. This trailer does come with a manual crank. I'm gonna grab a drill when we get down to the end so we can see how that's done. Store your sewer hose here. This black tube will hold a 15 foot collapsible sewer hose. And next we've got the fill port for the onboard fresh tank. So when you're bringing water with you, you're gonna add it through this port here. This trailer has the tank monitor in the bathroom. So when we get around the back, I'll show you how you can set up the monitor so that you can watch the status of your tanks as you're filling and emptying them. But if you lose track of the fresh tank as you're filling it and you overfill it, it's gonna come out of the vent port next to the fill port and not inside the trailer. Now I will recommend that you cycle through the water in your fresh tank every two weeks to 30 days. 
After two weeks, if you're drinking the water, it's going to start to taste a little stale. And after about 30 days, especially out in the heat, that water will start to stink like feet. The drain for the fresh tank is below. You're going to see a little white pet cock on the side of a silver case. Rotate the flag at the top towards the rear of the trailer and it will slowly drain out. And if you notice down there, you see two brass valves with red handles. Those are the low point drains. You're going to open those when you're winterizing. Coming back up here, we've got your camp service. It's a 30 amp service on this trailer, always 120 volts. This is the shore cord that's going to come with the trailer. It's 25 feet long. These smart plugs have a cap, so you can pull it out and cap the end off, keep it clean when you're storing it. Below that, you've got a cable and satellite port. They are labeled cable and satellite, and they're going to terminate in different places inside the trailer. We're going to talk again about that when we get inside. Back here, we've got the city water connection. This is where you're going to connect your water hose at your camping site for your on-demand water. Remember, Airstreams have built-in water pressure regulators, so you don't need to add an external pressure regulator. They are 50 PSI, and they are also plumbed through the onboard water pump. So if you're staying at a camping site and the water pressure is weak, you can turn on the onboard pump and it will boost the pressure at your faucets. This feeds the faucets directly. It does not fill the fresh tank and then pass the water onto the faucets. Below that, you have the waste cleanout valve. So when you attach your water hose here, it puts water directly into the black waste tank. That's where the toilet empties and it's designed to help you flush that one out. Next, we have your outside shower. Remember, if you're boondocking and you're using this with the fresh tank to get water pressure here, you'll have to turn on the onboard water pump. The city water is going to pressurize every faucet in the trailer, including this one. And this trailer also has an on-demand water heater. The default for the control panel on the water heater is on. As long as one of your propane bottles is open, all you have to do is open the hot water valve and within 10 or 15 seconds, you'll also have hot water out here. On this particular trailer, you want to make sure that you never leave the shower door open and operate the furnace. This is the exhaust for the furnace and I have seen them melt these doors if they're left open. I do want to mention that these exhausts for the furnace are susceptible to those mud dauber wasps. We sell screens that you can cover them with that'll keep those bugs out of there. Next, we have your waste clean out. There is a light in case you've got to connect at night. These handles are color coordinated and they're also labeled above. Black tank on the right, gray tank on the left. Remember the black tank is the toilet and everything else will empty into the gray tank. You always begin with the black tank, but before you pull this valve, I want you to connect a water hose to the waste cleanout valve and start to introduce fresh water. This is a gravity drain, so you need the maximum volume of water to help carry your solid waste out. So I will recommend you fill it as full as you're comfortable. 80 or 90% is typically sufficient. Pull the valve and you'll notice the water comes out of here much faster than it goes into that port. So when the flow diminishes and the tank is mostly empty, close the valve, fill it right back up to the top with fresh water. I want you to fill and empty this tank two or three times until that flow goes from muddy to cleaner. So I want you to wash it out until it's basically clean. Once it's clean, close the valve, let a little water back into there so that you've got something for your chemical to dissolve and diffuse into. I will typically fill it until it reads about 5%. That's usually the first number you're gonna see on the waste gauge. Turn the water off, go inside and add the chemical into the toilet right then so you don't forget. You wanna leave a little chemically treated water in the black tank only so as you're towing it around, It'll slosh around in there and help keep the inside clean. Come back outside and do the gray tank second. The gray tank is gonna have mostly soapy water from your sinks and showers. By doing it second, it'll help wash this pipe out. What you do not wanna do is open both valves at the same time. If you open both valves at the same time, the black tank will flow into the gray tank and contaminate it. And you also do not wanna leave your valves open at your camping site. You'll end up drying out the black waste tank. And if you left the gray tank open, you could permit insects to crawl inside your onboard tank. We're going to grab a drill. We're going to draw the stabilizer down. All right, so we're going to draw the stabilizer jack down. Now, before you do draw the stabilizers down, you need to make sure that you have leveled the trailer and that you have disconnected the tow vehicle. You never want to operate the tongue jack at the front with the stabilizers down. You're going to end up putting too much pressure on one end or another, and you'll cause them to collapse. So if your camping site is unlevel side to side, I do recommend you back the low side up on some blocks, level it side to side first. At that point, you can disconnect your tow vehicle if you're going to and then you'll be able to level it front to back with the tongue jack. Once you've got the trailer level, it's as simple as just cranking them on down. Run it down until it touches the ground. Give it just a little bit of extra pressure. I will typically start here in this corner and work my way counterclockwise around. So I'm gonna do the two rear first and then I'm gonna do the two front. The most important thing for you to remember about your stabilizers is to bring them back up before you leave. If you begin to tow away with these down, you will simply rip them out from under the trailer. So please do not make that mistake.
Now we'll come around the back. Starting at the top, you've got a backup camera. This backup camera has a microphone. So whoever's back here giving directions, if they speak towards the camera, they can be heard where the monitor is. But remember, it's just a one way from the camera to the monitor. Down below, you've got the bumper of the trunk storage. This is your wet storage compartment. So when the door is shut, it's actually still open here on the ends. Don't put anything in this one that you're worried about getting wet. We'll come around the corner here, all the way up to the front. This is gonna be the main outside storage compartment on the trailer. In here we've got a light that does not come on and off as you open and close the door. So I do recommend that you make sure you turn the light in the storage compartment off. It's just gonna be one less thing to come on when you hit the master switch by the door. Next to that, we've got the external AC plug. This is just your standard 15 amp AC and it's only available when you're plugged into your shore service. The inverter is not gonna send power to this unit. Next to that is the water heater. Remember, this is an on-demand water heater. It is not a tankless water heater, although it will behave as a tankless water heater. There is a little 0.4 gallon tank. There's not a drain plug. There is no adnode rod. So for most folks, it's gonna be basically maintenance free. And the control panel that you'll interface with is in the bathroom. Remember, the default for that control panel is on. So if the trailer is powered, the control panel is also powered, but being on demand, you've got to draw water through it to get it to do anything. Outside here, we'll find a master disconnect switch. This is going to disable the entire unit. Over here, we've got a pressure relief valve. This allows us to service the water heater. The thing you need to remember about the water heater is that it is propane fired. So in addition to having one of your propane bottles open when you go to make hot water, you need to remember there's also going to be a hot propane exhaust coming out. Just make sure you haven't blocked it with anything flammable like the back of a fabric chair. All right, now we're gonna fold out the manual awning on this trailer. We're gonna start here with the travel latch. And I always start with the hook style one. You're just gonna rotate that up and out of the way. The ones on the end here are gonna unscrew. Come down here to the other end. All right, now when you pull the awning out on this side, it's very important that you pull away from the trailer and not straight down so you don't accidentally scratch the side of the trailer with your awning tool. Grab the strap, pull the strap to you. Get rid of the tool and keep pulling the strap until the flap comes out. Make sure you've got a hold of it until you can get down here to the arm. Once you're there, place the arm up here on the head and then push it forward to lock it in place. Now we're gonna come down to the other end. We're gonna do the same thing. And I do wanna mention that <clears throat> the front end where the hook is is spring-loaded and the lock is on the upper end. So we're just kind of pushing it until it locks in between the awning. Now at this point, we can start to extend it. There are four of these notches and you can do up to two at a time before the arms start to bind, but I will typically just start with one. Come over here and do a couple more. So there's one and two. And we'll come back down here and do two more. Three and four. Now you'll notice that I've got this awning at an angle. This awning is a sunshade, so if you've got more sunlight coming in low from one direction or another, you can tilt the awning to block the sun, but it is not a heavy rain or a heavy wind shade. It's made of aluminum. It's designed to be lightweight, cannot take the torque of a heavy wind, and of course a heavy wind will always accompany a heavy rain. So if it starts to blow or pour, you want to make sure you have folded the awning and put it away. The strap is going to roll up. And eventually you'll be able to tuck it into the loop here. Now I also want to mention that there is an LED light strip across the top. That light strip is on a dimmer switch. It is labeled right inside the door. You can dim the light. Or turn it off, but 
remember, tar or folding the awning in does not cause the light to go out, only the switch. And of course, you cannot see that the light is on when the awning is folded in. So when you've got the awning in, you want to just make sure you've got the light turned off. Putting it away is just the reverse of bringing it out. So we'll drop your strap out here. Come down to this end. We're going to drop a couple of notches. And I want you to notice that I don't hold this out. I pull it out and then I let it ride until it slips back into that notch. If you hold it out, it's going to wind up going all the way down to the bottom and that's when it's going to bind. Come down here to this end. Now at this point, we're going to pull here to release. Now we're going to set this on the travel rest. Just get set in place. It doesn't have to be locked. Down here to the last end. Now at this point, you need to make sure you've got a hold of it when you pull here to release. So that way it doesn't come rolling in on its own. And I'll either grab the flap Put my hand up here until I can get over to the strap. Again, if you need to, you can use the tool to return it. Always run it in until it connects with the little aluminum cover. Allow it to snap in those last couple inches so it's nice and tight and it doesn't wrinkle. And then you want to remember to re-engage your travel latch if you're leaving your camping site. I will typically start with the hook style latch. Come down here, pinch the arms together, slip this in its slot, and then tighten it down. And nothing says you actually have to use the tools to tighten those down. On this particular trailer, you can stand here in the doorway and reach the rear one. And if you had a little step ladder, you could use that to do the front one as well. Now, Brian, if you'll follow me inside, I do want to point out we've got a fire extinguisher right here by the door. On the other side, you will find the master disconnect switch. This is how you'll turn the trailer off for storage. It's going to turn every item in the trailer off, including the refrigerator. And we're going to talk about that again in just a moment. Turn it back on like so. Above, we've got the awning and the ceiling light. Remember, these are on dimmers. And then the little guy by itself is just the little step light right outside the door. All right, we'll head off into here. It's tough to show on this trailer. This trailer has a glass shower door. There is a little tab here keeping it shut. You wanna make sure that it stays shut while you're towing. If it flies open, it's gonna shatter. But the hard thing to see is that you can actuate the tab from the inside of the shower. So that way you can kind of latch it shut. And if you turn and bump the shower door with your elbow, you won't knock it open to spill a bunch of water on the floor. In the shower, you will find a clothesline that's gonna be good for your bathing suits or your dish towels, but nothing heavy. You obviously don't want to tow with anything hanging from that. And there is also a pause feature on the shower head itself that will allow you to pause the water as you're soaping up. It's going to help you conserve the capacity of your gray tank. Step in here. On the wall, we've got the sea level monitor. It's going to give you your battery level. That is 13.3 volts. And also the water tank levels. They're displayed in a percentage. So the fresh tank is 100% full. The gray tank is 75% full. And the black tank is also 100% full. Now, <clears throat> when you press the button one time, within a few seconds, that digit is going to disappear. But if you press the button twice, you'll get a little dot here. That dot will hold the value for that particular tank on the screen for roughly five minutes. So that way, as you're filling and emptying the tanks, you can look in the rear window of the unit and watch the status. We're also going to find the onboard water pump switch here. We're going to turn it on. It's going to pressure up and stop. It's an on-demand water pump. So it's not going to come back on until you create a demand. Below that, we have the water heater. Now, I have the temperature set to 118 degrees. And remember, the default for this control is on. You can turn it off by pressing the red button here. But if we turn the trailer off and turn the trailer back on from the disconnect switch by the door, the water heater will just come right back on. The temperature will get as hot as 124 degrees or as cool as 96 degrees. But being on demand, we've actually got to create a demand to get it to do anything. So I'm going to open a water valve over here on the sink. We're getting an indicator here when the water heater starts to work and when it's at lights, we'll get a flame here in the middle. Now, once the temperature tops 110 degrees, you should already feel some heat coming out.
and then it'll shut off whenever you take the water source away. Below that, you'll find the light switch for the bathroom. What I'm sitting on here is the toilet. Just real quick, when you want to flush the toilet, the lever on the right hand side, a partial step will fill the bowl. Full step flushes, push your chemical goes straight down into the toilet. And before you leave, turn off the water pump and use the toilet to take the pressure off the water lines. Coming out of here, behind the bathroom door, you have a pantry for the galley. This pantry has adjustable shelves. I do recommend you put all the heavy stuff down low. It's gonna fall there anyways, and when it does, it's gonna be difficult to get the door open. In the galley, we're gonna find the solar monitor panel. This one has a 90 watt solar panel and the default, I'm sorry, the solar system in this trailer is automatic. So as long as there's sun on the panel, it's already charging your batteries. You do not need to turn the solar system on or off. This does allow you to monitor the status. And next to that, you're gonna see the inverter control. We're gonna press the button on the right hand side. We're gonna turn it on. The inverter is gonna provide an alternating current service when you're boondocking and all you have available is the direct current that's stored in the batteries. This is a 1000 watt inverter, so it's got enough power to power the television and the DVD player. And you're also gonna find power at the plug below the dinette. It's gonna give you the battery voltage. You can cycle through to the shore power and the third display that's currently blank is the draw. Turning it off will require you to press the button until you see the display flash. Flash. All right, next we've got the vent hood. A little fan there and a light. Below that you've got the range. To get this to light, take a little flame and line it up with the arrow. Strike the igniter. Please note that they turn red when they're open blue when they're closed. Now if you've been cooking on the range and it's nice and hot, give it a chance to cool before you close the lid. The lid is made of tempered glass and if it gets too hot, it might shatter. This unit has a gas oven. The gas oven will not light from the igniter that operates the range. You're going to need to use a kitchen lighter or a long match. You'll find a silver tab right below this shelf. Follow that to the back with that lighter or match. Once you've got the pilot light open, it will light and then you can turn the temperature up from there. Next, we've got the refrigerator. Now, the refrigerator in this unit is an AC-DC refrigerator. So plugged into the shore service, it's running off of AC. Pull the shore cord, it's gonna automatically switch over to DC in the battery. You don't have to do anything to make that happen. This refrigerator has a, ta a travel tab on the refrigerator door and down here on the freezer door as well. These are helping to keep the door shut as you're towing. These little tabs can be actuated when you're storing it to help prop that door open so it doesn't mold or mildew. Now inside here, you're gonna see one temperature knob that's gonna operate both units. Seven is the coldest and one is the warmest. Now this refrigerator takes two or three hours to get completely cold. I do recommend you plug it in, get it cold overnight. As long as it's completely packed full of cold food, it will stay cold without an external power source for five or six hours. However, because it runs off of the batteries and the tow vehicle is charging the house batteries as you tow, if you leave the master disconnect switch by the door on, you will power the refrigerator all the way until you reach your camping site. Next, we've got the dinette. To fold it into a bed, I want you to pull out on these levers here, and then you're simply gonna push the tabletop straight down. Now, when you make this into a bed for real, push the cushions out of the way, go all the way down to the cabinet, take the short end off here, and place it right in the middle, and then on the other end as well. It is spring-loaded, so when you're ready to return it to a table, Undo the levers again, and it will come back up on its own. This can also be swiveled. And on one side, we're gonna find a little, really hard to undo latch. And that will let it slide. Now up here in this cabinet is where we're gonna find the DVD Blu-ray player and the radio. This is the monitor for the backup camera. We always pair those up before you go. The radio is actually 12 volt powered, so it'll work when you're boondocking. This will also pair with your phone. Now you're gonna select the source. You're gonna come over here to Bluetooth, select that with the center knob. And then when you go to connect new device, the code that you'll see on your phone is a combination of the radio model. The radio is a JL Audio Media Master 50, so the code is simply JLAMM50.
Remember, this will play DVDs and Blu-rays. Here's the remote for the TV, the remote for the DVD player. They also come with an AC power tester. Behind the radio is where you're going to find the termination point for the satellite port on the side of the trailer. This is designed for you to place the satellite receiver in here. You can actually pull the coax cable out from behind there, run it through the wall here, plug the receiver into that outlet there. And if you were to take the HDMI cable out of the DVD player, plug all that in and you'll send the satellite signal out to the TV in the bedroom onto the HDMI one slot. Currently, you'll find the DVD and the Blu-ray player on that slot. So if you want to watch a DVD or a Blu-ray, simply switch the TV over to HDMI one. Now I do want to mention that the TV is on a travel bracket. So if you pull the strap here, it will come away from the wall. Just make sure you've got it secure when you're towing. And against the wall here, we're going to see a little white plate with a green light. That is the power for the antenna on the roof. So on the roof is an omnidirectional boosted digital antenna. And when the green light is lit, it is powered, allowing you to draw in the local signal, not only on the television, but also on the radio. But you'll note a little black button. And when we push it, the light goes out. The signal on the TV freezes. It's now allowing the signal to pass through from the cable port on the side of the trailer. So remember, the satellite port is going to terminate over here behind the radio. The cable port is going to terminate where the TV is plugged in. It's already wired into the TV, but you got to turn the booster off to get the signal to pass through. Below the television, you're going to see that the overhead light in the bedroom is also on a dimmer switch. And then across from me, behind this little small wardrobe, is where we're going to find the HVAC control. This is a 30 amp trailer, so the zone button will be disabled on this one. All right, so when the HVAC controller is dark, the first press of any of the buttons is simply going to turn the backlight on. So you folks will end up pressing the buttons twice in a lot of cases. We're going to press the power button here, we're going to turn the backlight on, and then we're going to press it again to get the unit powered. We're going to use the mode button, and the first option we're going to have is the air conditioner. Now I do want to mention that these air conditioners don't fire up immediately. It takes just a few minutes, you'll see a little hourglass pop up, the fan's going to come on first, and then once the compressor kicks in, the hourglass will disappear, and that's usually within about 30 seconds of the fan itself coming on. All right, the fan just came on right there. We're still waiting on the compressor to kick in. All right, now if you look down here, you'll see a little fan symbol, and it says auto. That is the fan speed control, and there are three speeds. You have low, medium, and high. I do recommend you leave it in auto as the default so that way when you turn the control panel on the fan doesn't come on immediately. And I also want to mention that the speeds don't change immediately so be patient with it. Now by mode we're going to have another auto across the top. The auto across the top is going to automatically switch between the air conditioner and the heat pump depending on your ambient temperature and what you've got the target temperature on the control panel set for. By mode the next option will be the heat pump the heat pump is your electric heat, so you must be plugged into your shore service to get it to work just like the air conditioner. It does make a little squishy sound as it switches back and forth from the air conditioner to the heat pump, so you can listen for that. And I also want to mention that the heat pump is only going to work at 100% efficiency down to about 50 degrees ambient temperature. After that, you're going to want to switch over to the propane furnace. The propane furnace is powered through zone 2. So on zone 1 after the heat pump, we have a fan only option and then off. The furnace is going to disable the overhead unit and it will come on down below separately. They are two separate units. And even though the furnace is powered through the same control panel as the air conditioner and the heat pumps, the furnace is going to work when you're boondocking and it will run off of just the batteries, whereas the air conditioners and the heat pumps will, re will require you to plug into a minimum of a 30 amp service. Back to the furnace, I do want to mention the furnace does not light immediately, but it is propane fired. So you need to make sure that you've got at least one of your propane bottles open. It takes about 10 seconds before it lights. Once it's lit, you can use the overhead fan if you're plugged into the shore service by selecting a speed, and that'll draw the furnace air up into the ducting and help redistribute it throughout the trailer. After you shut this off, and I do want you to cycle through to off on both zones before you turn the control panel off, you'll notice that the furnace continues to run for two minutes. Please do not depower the trailer during that time. It is just blowing regular temperature air through the ducting to make sure there's not any hot spots. And I want you to make sure that both zones are off before you turn the control panel off. So that way when you turn the control panel back on, it doesn't accidentally come on to whatever you had been using previously. We also have the inside temperature button here. You have your Fahrenheit Celsius button, temperature up and down. There is a clock and it has two programmable cycles. Remember your fan speed control, the modes, the zone button, 
and of course your power button. So under the bed, you're gonna find some storage. If we lift up on the end of the bed here, it's on shocks. They come with a couple of tubs. And then of course you've got a couple of access ports all the way around it. Just be careful when you're pushing the bed back down. You don't want it banging too hard. Well, thanks for your time, y'all. Thanks for watching our video. If you have any questions or have any recommendations on content you'd like to see, make sure to drop a comment in the comment section below. If you enjoy our content, give us a like and be sure to subscribe to our channel. Thanks again from Airstream DFW.